All right, guys, it's B-Side here with the SCS4 DJ from Stanton, and I'm gonna go over some of the do's and don'ts or tips and tricks of this product. An important thing to remember when you're using the SCS4 DJ is gonna be your EQ levels. Often, when you're mixing, a lot of times you cut out the highs, the mids, or the lows. Remember, these are a complete kill, so if you have audio going, you will not hear anything at all until you readjust the EQ settings. If you do not have a microphone and you don't want to use a microphone, it's always good to keep the mic volume down. Keep your master volume somewhere around 12 o'clock, not all the way up so you don't get distortion. And very importantly for your cueing, you cue either channel one or channel two with the little headphone buttons and your cue pan should be in a desired position. Everyone's a little bit different when it comes to uh, actually mixing in their headphones. Some DJs like to only hear the cue, others like to only hear the master. This is the cue pan for that, and then the volume for that headphone. You have dual outputs, eighth inch and quarter inch, which both work simultaneously. So if you're DJing with someone else or you're teaching someone else how to DJ, that's a good way for you to actually have both those outputs. Here, the system settings is really gonna be the key for each DJ to individualize his unit. In the audio settings, I can adjust auto cue, auto loop length, the headphone split, and even the pitch slider range, which is gonna be really important for DJs who like to manually adjust the pitch. Each of these system settings can be adjusted by just scrolling to the desired setting that you wanna change and then entering and setting that exactly how you want. So your platter speed, your crossfader, and even some of your more generic settings like factory resetting everything if you make a mistake or you get lost. So it's real important that you take a look at your audio setting. It's really important for DJs who've just got the unit to understand that it does come with a demo video. The demo video will automatically play and play looped until you either exit it by pressing home or browse. Upon boot up, you have a way to disable that. So once you've learned how to use the unit, you can disable the demo video mode by holding the system button when it prompts you to do that on boot up. Really cool feature of the SCS4 DJ is the auto DJ feature. And unlike a lot of the other controllers that are out there or some of the other software that's out there, this auto DJ setting will actually let you grab a playlist that you've pre-set up either in Windows Media Player or iTunes, or you can actually go in and start from scratch using the unit and create a playlist. Once you have a playlist stored, you can activate that playlist, load one song on each deck, and when you load a song, you're automatically gonna be sent to your home screen. You switch from the waveform view to the art album art view with the total wave and your beat measures, and you'll see you have auto DJ. You can activate the auto DJ, you'll see the icon of the little headphone guy, letting you know you're in auto DJ mode. Auto DJ will actually not only play the songs in order of the list, it will automatically beat match from deck A to deck B, back to A, in the order of your playlist. That's your auto DJ setting. I am not a typical uh, controller DJ. I come from the vinyl era, and I really think it's important to learn how to mix and pitch bin manually but now with the technology, you have the ability to actually do a sync. The problem with most software is that the sync is forcing you to look to beat match strictly on numerical value. Smart Sync will actually know when I have a song that is half the normal BPM. So for example here, I've got a song that is correctly at 126 BPM. The other song is showing 63 point something BPM. That is actually not the BPM. It's very easy for you to go in and tap the tempo in and it will adjust that BPM. But for those of you who don't change that or who may be unaware and actually hit sync, this unit is smart enough to actually take your BPMs 
even if it's half tempo, and still match the beat on time. And here's a good example of that. I'll throw it off a little bit. One is at 126, the other is at 63. Sync. And now it's in perfect harmony. Another important thing to remember about BPM is although the songs will analyze automatically when you first uh, connect your thumb drive or your hard drive, if that BPM is incorrect, you have the ability to manually tap that BPM in and you'll see the BPM will actually change from white to blue on the screen. And if you want to reanalyze or go back to your original analyzed BPM, you press and hold the tap button and it'll automatically go back from blue to white, letting you know that you're back at the original analyzed BPM. A really nice feature, if I'm trying to scroll through a song, typically, if I don't have the platter engaged, it's just pitch bend. If I have the scratch mode on and I spin it, it's spinning in real time. I can press and hold my scratch button and then spin the wheel and you'll see that I can scroll through the song in high speed large portions and that goes forward as well as reverse which is a really cool way for you to find a particular part of the song if you don't have a cue point. Alright, now we're going to have some fun. Alright, so I'm adjusting my EQs and I'm gonna go into a loop. And now I'm gonna engage a effect. And I can easily jump out of the loop, turn it off. I can hit sync again. Go back to my cue point. Wait for the next beat measure. Loop over here. And I can even sync a loop and it'll still catch the And now I'm gonna do a nice little loop over here and play with slicing. Slicing has gotta be the coolest effect. Now that's the loop. I'm gonna make a really big loop and show you some cool stuff with slice. I'm adjusting the, the time or the bars that I'm actually slicing with this parameter. And then I can adjust the frequency and the amount, which will sometimes play forward or reverse. And when I jump out of that, I'm gonna be in the same place so now I'm going to exit loop and show you what the slice does by itself. So for all you glitch freaks out there, the slice is perfect for it. can jump out. So the cool thing with Slice is it's almost like a loop with a little bit of a beat slicer or a beat masher in between. You activate Slice exactly when you want to 
begin that momentary loop and you can adjust how long or how short of that time is. When you jump out, it's automatically at the proper point in the track. Filter, flanger, and then delay. And those are your four effects using some looping.